Hello and welcome to the Red Bull Hangar 7. It's World Tour 4 for the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo World Championships. My name is Tom Brooks, alongside me, Jimmy Broadbent, Steve Brown, otherwise known as Super GT. Nice to have you boys here again. So let's get straight into it. Jimmy, we were here last year, the uh, Hangar 7, of course, brilliant venue. You looking forward to this year? I mean, always. I mean, look around you. I mean, you got all these awesome planes and cars in the background. It's like a, just an enthusiast dream, really. And uh, last year was, um, I think, a nice uh, tone setter for what we have this year. Uh, apart from the fact that in here, it's, it's the warmest place in the world. It's, it's a massive <laughs> greenhouse. So we're, I'm wearing this jacket right now. We don't want to see my underarm, so destroyed. Absolutely. That is a pleasant <laughs> thought to put in people's heads before the weekend, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's going to be good. And Steve, I mean, you've only been here, you've had a very, very brief look around. What do you think here so far? It's a pretty cool place, right? Yeah, uh, it's a very cool place to have an event with all the, the racing cars, all the planes. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. That's going to be good, isn't it? Um, I mean, let's get straight into it as well. In terms of the uh, manufacturer series, we've got a new format for mm. this time. That's sort of the big talking point, really. Instead of having the uh, three races, as we've had previous, and then the one big final race, we've got two longer races, which involves all of the drivers. So, uh, essentially, two endurance races, which, I mean, it's going to be interesting, that, in terms of strategy. Yeah, I think it's a nice change. A lot of people are kind of fed back, but they like to have um, the, the longer races, because it's just more of a... Um well, more can go wrong. Um, strategy can play a bigger part and drivers can make an individual difference as opposed to having these kind of uh, very short uh, shootouts. So um, I kind of, I'm wondering if we'll see drivers try and, uh, or, or teams effectively use the same strategy for both races. Mm -hmm. you know, just have the same level of drivers because usually, and you know, it's, it's hard to say, but there's usually you know, a, a weaker link sure. in a team. Um, I'm not really sure how I'd, how I'd handle that. I mean, how would you handle it, Steve, if you've got a winker link in the team, somebody who's perhaps more of a, you know, a slower driver compared to the other two or something like that? Well, I think normally you want to put your weaker driver probably in the middle of the race on as short a stint as possible. Mm. Um, you want to be quick at the start of the race, obviously, mm. just to make sure you settle into the race well. Then you want to end it strongly. Um, but I suppose it's up to each of the teams to work out who is the stronger driver, who is the weaker driver, and maybe for the weaker driver to say, yeah, okay, I'm not as quick around mm. this track in this car, so... That's pretty tricky. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose Especially you have to put you. your ego aside yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> just admit that you're maybe a little bit slower and um, come in a little bit earlier into the pit lane and hand over to your quicker drivers. Well, I mean, going back to last year as well in particular, uh, last year, sorry, last event rather, what am I talking about? Uh, the last World Tour <laughs> event we had in New York, sorry, it feels like it's been forever it's ago. Jet lag, yeah, it is, it's, it's, been reality. Reality. it's only been a few weeks. Uh, Takuma Miyazono, I mean, he was a driver mm. who was hugely impressive, suffered a lot of misfortune though, of course, in the uh, Nations Cup race in particular, contact that he had uh, with Cody Lukowski, really putting him out of contention. I mean, you and I, Jimmy, on the commentary at the time, thought he pulled a blinder of a strategy to be leading the way. Then we realised he didn't put any fuel in the car. Well, as I said, like, to, to be honest, we, we missed what he was doing. Mm. We, we thought he was uh, trying something completely different, which was just not correct. And after mm. the race, it transpires that he was the only driver out there doing this crazy three-stop strategy that really could have probably put him on, on the podium. I mean, like, I don't even know how you come up with that. Mm. I, I, we were sitting there completely flabbergasted. And of course, in the comments afterwards, you guys telling us how stupid we all are, which we are, of course. Um, <laughs> but it was nice to kind of give that insight because now we now we, we look for that we mm. expect that now. yeah yeah absolutely I mean Steve what do you think about the importance of, of strategy in those longer races where you've got it, multiple tyre compounds you've got fuel to take into consideration yeah it's, it's obviously it's one of the most important things um, it's probably more important than just than your outright pace your ability to save fuel mm. and you save your tyres um, is crucial and I think Miyazono he probably should have been on the podium could have won it maybe um, because, because he went for something very different, he just went flat out, I'm not going to feel safe at all, I'm just going to go for it, and it actually nearly worked for him. So uh, today, or sorry, in these events over the weekend, people are going to have to make sure they know um, the, the actual best strategy, because it looked like in New York, maybe he just got the best strategy and no one actually knew what the best strategy was. So. Do you reckon he kind of like showed his hand a bit early, given that you know, the result really kind of didn't come off for him in the end? Maybe. It, fault, it looked a bit strange because he, it looked like he got pushed into the pit lane and he That's didn't want to do it. Actually. So maybe he kind of got forced into it, but mm. he got the clear air and it almost worked out for him. I mean, of course, the winner from last time, Igor Fraga, isn't here as well. Um, 
who do you think is going to be able to be the driver that's going to step up to that plate? We've got Mick Hazal here. We know how he was feeling. We don't need to mention about how he was feeling after the uh, after the last event. I mean, you, there's other drivers to take into consideration. Miyazono could be one. Koke Lopez as well. You know, the, uh, Cody Lukowski, for example, yeah. if he has a better run of things this time around. Who is going to be the driver that you think is going to be there and thereabouts and bring that fight forwards to the front? I mean, you basically listed the the people that I would kind of pick first, you know, but that's a, that's a beautiful thing that um, different location, different mindset can bring in new people back into the fray. I mean, my, I mean we, we have Martin Grady here mm -hmm. again. He's not been at this uh, one of these, uh, well, it wasn't at the last event. Great to have him here again, so good to see how he does. We have um, our friend Yomas, mm. uh, the, the yes. friend <laughs> is uh, with a fantastic cap. And we but basically, it's, it's hard to tell at this point. Mm. It's hard to tell. Who's your money on, Steve? I think I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go with Mikhail. He's um, well. We saw in in New York how close he was with with Igor. Without Igor there, he should, on paper, be the one to be at the front. But you never know. It could all, could all go horribly wrong. I hope it doesn't for him. But <laughs> it's about time he had some success. Maybe apart from him, maybe someone like Nico Rublar mm -hmm. um, had some success earlier in the year, so he could come up to the front again. Absolutely. I mean, we looked at um, Coke Lopez last time, took that first podium. We were saying, Jimmy, he was, you know, he's been a nearly man all season. He's been those driver that's been there and thereabouts, and he seems to be part of the furniture here at the GT Championships, but never was able to make that step until last time. Now he's on the podium. Do you think he can go two better and, and bring that fight to Mick this weekend? Um, you know, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not sure on out and out pace that Lopez has the same kind of speed as Mick does, but that's not always what races are about. If, if it was all about lap time, then you get the same guys winning each time. But you know, there are different circumstances. We've seen how people can get involved in incidents and bits like that, and it can really shake things up. So um, whilst I don't think on pace he can beat Nick, if he can drive a, a smart race as he did last time, you know, who knows? Mm. I mean, maybe we will, we will see him a, a step better. Steve, what do you reckon about Coco? I think he's, had a, he's definitely had a sort of upwards tra trajectory mm. this year. So. If things go his way, you never know if other drivers don't perform as well as they should and he performs as well as he should or better, then he could definitely be up there. Right, OK, lads, time to pick. Manufacturer Series, Nations Cup, pick one team and one driver who's going to excel in both. Jimmy, you first. Porsche. OK. And Outside I'm choice. going to say Miyazono. Miyazono. Steve. Peugeot. Oh, Peugeot. <laughs> Meme choice <laughs> and Hizal. I like your thinking. Easy. That's it. Interesting. Well, let's see where the Peugeot and Hizal are going to uh, end up on top. Uh, Jimmy, Steve, thank you both very much for your company here this afternoon. Look forward to joining you uh, over the course of this weekend. Uh, who do you think are going to be the drivers and the teams that are going to excel here at the Red Bull Hangar 7? Comment below. Let us know uh, what your thoughts are on that one. We really look forward to hearing from you on that. Don't forget, of course, we've got action from the Manufacturer Series on Friday here and also the Nations Cup on Saturday. So we'll see you then for the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships.